Emmanuel Levinas, French, Manuel Elvinas, the 12th of January 1906 to the 25th of December 1995, was a French philosopher of Lithuanian Jewish ancestry who is known for his work related to Jewish philosophy, existentialism, ethics, phenomenology, and ontology. Topic: Life and career. Emmanuelus Levinas later adapted to French orthography as Emmanuel Levinas was born in 1906 into a middle-class Litvic family in Kaunas, Lithuania. Because of the disruptions of World War I, the family moved to Charkow in Ukraine in 1916, where they stayed during the Russian revolutions of February and October 1917. In 1920 his family returned to Lithuania. Levinas's early education was in secular, Russian-language schools in Kaunas and Charkow. Upon his family's return to Lithuania, Levinas spent two years at a Jewish gymnasium before departing for France, where he commenced his university education. Levinas began his philosophical studies at the University of Strasbourg in 1923, and his lifelong friendship with the French philosopher Maurice Blanchot. In 1928, he went to the University of Freiburg for two semesters to study phenomenology under Edmund Husserl. At Freiburg he also met Martin Heidegger, whose philosophy greatly impressed him. Levinas would in the early 1930s be one of the first French intellectuals to draw attention to Heidegger and Husserl by translating in 1931 Husserl's Cartesian Meditations with the help of Gabriel Pfeiffer and with advice from Alexander Coiré and by drawing on their ideas in his own philosophy, in works such as La théorie de l'intuition dans la phénoménologie de Husserl the theory of intuition in Husserl's phenomenology, his 1929-30 doctoral thesis, De l'existence à l'existent from existence to existence, 1947, and en découvrant l'existence avec Husserl et Heidegger Discovering Existence with Husserl and Heidegger, 1st edition, 1949, with editions, 1967. In 1929 he was awarded his doctorate, doctorate d'université degree by the University of Strasbourg for his thesis on the meaning of intuition in the philosophy of Husserl, published in 1930. Levinas became a naturalized French citizen in 1939. When France declared war on Germany, he reported for military duty as a translator of Russian and French. During the German invasion of France in 1940, his military unit was surrounded and forced to surrender. Levinas spent the rest of World War II as a prisoner of war in a camp near Hanover in Germany. Levinas was assigned to a special barrack for Jewish prisoners, who were forbidden any form of religious worship. Life in the Fallingbossel camp was difficult, but his status as a prisoner of war protected him from the Holocaust's concentration camps. Other prisoners saw him frequently jotting in a notebook. These jottings were later developed into his book De l'existence à l'existent and a series of lectures published under the title Le Temps et l'autre his wartime notebooks have now been published in their original form as Irves, Tome 1, Carnets de Captivité, Suivi de Écrit sur la Captivité, et, Notes philosophiques diverses 2009. Meanwhile, Maurice Blanchot helped Levinas's wife and daughter spend the war in a monastery, thus sparing them from the Holocaust. Blanchot, at considerable personal risk, also saw to it that Levinas was able to keep in contact with his immediate family through letters and other messages. Other members of Levinas's family were not so fortunate, his mother-in-law was deported and never heard from again, while his father and brothers were killed in Lithuania by the SS. After the Second World War, he studied the Talmud under the enigmatic Monsieur Shoshani, whose influence he acknowledged only late in his life. Levinas's first book-length essay, Totality and Infinity, 1961, was written as his doctorate d'état primary thesis, roughly equivalent to a habilitation thesis. His secondary thesis was titled Etudes sur la Phénoménologie Studies on Phenomenology. After earning his habilitation, Levinas taught at a private Jewish high school in Paris, the École Normale Israelite Orientale Paris, eventually becoming its director. He began teaching at the University of Poitiers in 1961, at the Nanterre campus of the University of Paris in 1967, and at the Sorbonne in 1973, from which he retired in 1979. He published his second major philosophical work, Autrement Ketra O O de la de Laissance, in 1974. He was also a professor at the University of Freiburg in Switzerland. In 1989 he was awarded the Balzan Prize for Philosophy. 
According to his obituary in the New York Times, Levinas came to regret his early enthusiasm for Heidegger, after the latter joined the Nazis. Levinas explicitly frames several of his mature philosophical works as attempts to respond to Heidegger's philosophy in light of its ethical failings. His son is the composer Michael Levinas. Among his most famous students is Rabbi Baruch Garzon from Titawan, Morocco, who learnt philosophy with Levinas at the Sorbonne, and later went on to become one of the most important rabbis of the Spanish-speaking world. Topic: <laughs> Philosophy. In the 1950s, Levinas emerged from the circle of intellectuals surrounding Jean Wall as a leading French thinker. His work is based on the ethics of the other or, in Levinas's terms, on ethics as first philosophy. For Levinas, the other is not knowable and cannot be made into an object of the self, as is done by traditional metaphysics which Levinas called ontology. Levinas prefers to think of philosophy as the wisdom of love, rather than the love of wisdom, the usual translation of the Greek philosophia. In his view, responsibility toward the other precedes any objective searching after truth. Levinas derives the primacy of his ethics from the experience of the encounter with the other. For Levinas, the irreducible relation, the epiphany, of the face-to-face, -face, the encounter with another, is a privileged phenomenon in which the other person's proximity and distance are both strongly felt. The other precisely reveals himself in his alterity not in a shock negating the eye, but as the primordial phenomenon of gentleness. At the same time, the revelation of the face makes a demand, this demand is before one can express, or know one's freedom, to affirm or deny. One instantly recognizes the transcendence and heteronomy of the other. Even murder fails as an attempt to take hold of this otherness. While critical of traditional theology, Levinas does require that a trace of the divine be acknowledged within an ethics of otherness. This is especially evident in his thematization of debt and guilt. A face is a trace of itself, given over to my responsibility, but to which I am wanting and faulty. It is as though I were responsible for his mortality, and guilty for surviving. The moral authority of the face of the other is felt in my infinite responsibility for the other. The face of the other comes toward me with its infinite moral demands while emerging out of the trace. Apart from this morally imposing emergence, the other's face might well be adequately addressed as thou, along the lines proposed by Martin Buber, in whose welcoming countenance I might find great comfort, love and communion of souls, but not a moral demand bearing down upon me from a height. Through a trace the irreversible past takes on the profile of a he, the beyond from which a face comes as in the third person. Quote, it is because the other also emerges out of the illiety of a he ill in French that I instead fall into infinite debt vis a vis the other in a situation of utterly asymmetrical obligations. I owe the other everything, the other owes me nothing. The trace of the other is the heavy shadow of God, the God who commands. Thou shalt not kill. Levinas takes great pains to avoid straightforward theological language. The very metaphysics of signification subtending theological language is suspected and suspended by evocations of how traces work differently than signs. Nevertheless, the divinity of the trace is also undeniable. The trace is not just one more word, it is the proximity of God in the countenance of my fellowman, in a sense, it is divine commandment without divine authority. Following totality and infinity, Levinas later argued that responsibility for the other is rooted within our subjective constitution. It should be noted that the first line of the preface of this book is, Everyone will readily agree that it is of the highest importance to know whether we are not duped by morality. This idea appears in his Of Recurrence, Chapter 4 in Otherwise Than Being, in which Levinas maintains that subjectivity is formed in and through our subjection to the other. Subjectivity, Levinas argued, is primordially ethical, not theoretical, that is to say, our responsibility for the other is not a derivative feature of our subjectivity, but instead, founds our subjective being in the world by giving it a meaningful direction and orientation. Levinas's thesis, ethics as first philosophy, then, means that the traditional philosophical pursuit of knowledge is secondary to a basic ethical duty to the other. To meet the other is to have the idea of infinity. The elderly Levinas was a distinguished French public intellectual, whose books reportedly sold well. 
He had a major influence on the younger, but more well-known Jacques Derrida, whose seminal writing and difference contains an essay, Violence and Metaphysics, that was instrumental in expanding interest in Levinas in France and abroad. Derrida also delivered a eulogy at Levinas's funeral, later published as Adieu Emmanuel Levinas, an appreciation and exploration of Levinas's moral philosophy. In a memorial essay for Levinas, Jean-Luc Marion claimed that if one defines a great philosopher as someone without whom philosophy would not have been what it is, then in France there are two great philosophers of the 20th century, Bergson and Levinas. His work has been a source of controversy since the 1950s, when Simone de Beauvoir criticized his account of the subject as being necessarily masculine, as defined against a feminine other. While other feminist philosophers like Tina Chanter and the eminent artist thinker Bracca L. Ettinger have defended him against this charge, increasing interest in his work in the 2000s brought a re-evaluation of the possible misogyny of his account of the feminine, as well as a critical engagement with his French nationalism in the context of colonialism. Among the most prominent of these are critiques by Simon Critchley and Stella Sanford. Cultural influence. For three decades, Levinas gave short talks on Rashi, a medieval French rabbi, every Shabbat morning at the Jewish high school in Paris where he was the principal. This tradition strongly influenced many generations of students. Jean Pierre and Luc Dardenne, renowned Belgian filmmakers, have referred to Levinas as an important underpinning for their filmmaking ethics. In his book Levinas and the Cinema of Redemption, Time, Ethics, and the Feminine, author Sam B. Gerges argues that Levinas has dramatically affected films involving redemption. Topic published works A full bibliography of all Levinas's publications up until 1981 is found in Roger Burgrave Emanuel Levinas 1982. A list of works, translated into English but not appearing in any collections, may be found in Critchley, S. and Bernasconi, R. E. D. S., The Cambridge Companion to Levinas P. U. B. L. Cambridge UP, 2002, pp. 269-270. Books 1929. Sur les de M. E. Husserl 1930. La théorie de l'intuition dans la phénoménologie de Husserl The Theory of Intuition in Husserl's Phenomenology 1931. Der Begriff des Irrationalen als Philosophisches Problem with Heinz Erich Eisenhuth 1931. Freiburg, Husserl et la Phénoménologie 1931. Les recherches sur la philosophie des mathématiques en la magna, aperçu général with W. Dubislav 1931. Meditations Cartesiennes. Introduction à la Phénoménologie with Edmund Husserl and Gabrielle Pfeiffer 1932. Martin Heidegger et l'Ontologie 1934. La total with Louis Lavelle 1934. Phénoménologie 1934. Quelques réflexions sur la philosophie de la Hitlerisme 1935. De l'évasion 1935. La notion du temps with Enkerson Sky 1935. L'actualité de Maimonide 1935. L'inspiration religieuse de l'Alliance 1936. Allure du Transcendental with Georges Benet, 1936. Esquisses d'une énergétique mentale with J. Duflo, 1936. Fraternizer sans se convertir, 1936. Les aspects de l'image visuelle with R. de Ray, 1936. Les the dique française contemporaine with Valentin Feldman, 1936. L'individu dans la déséquilibre moderne with R. Munch, 1936. Valor with Georges Benet, 1947. De l'existence à l'existent, from existence to existence, 1948. Le temps et l'autre, time and the other, 1949. En découvrant l'existence avec Husserl et Heidegger, discovering existence with Husserl and Heidegger, 1961. Totalité et infini, essay sur l'extériorité, totality and infinity, an essay on exteriority, 1962. De l'évasion 1963 and 1976. Difficult Freedom, Essays on Judaism 1968. Quatre Lectures Talmudiques 1972. Humanise me de l'autre homme, Humanism of the Other, 1974. Autrement quetre o de la délaissance, Otherwise than being or beyond essence, 1976. Sir Maurice Blanchot 1976. Noms Propers 1977. Du Sacre au Saint, Cinq Nouvelles Lectures Talmudiques 1980. Le Temps et l'Autre 1982. 
Lo de la du Verset, Lectures et Discours Talmudiques 1982. Of God Who Comes to Mind 1982. Ethique et Infini Ethics and Infinity, Dialogues of Emmanuel Levinas and Philippe Nemo 1984. Transcendence et Intelligibilité 1988. Allure des Nations 1991. Entre nous 1995. Alterité et Transcendence 1998. De l'Obliteration. Intrition avec Françoise Armengo à propos de l'Herve de Cisno on Obliteration, discussing Sasha Cisno, trans. Richard A. Cohen, in, Art and Text Winter 1989, 30-41. Articles in English. A language familiar to us. Telos 44, Summer 1980. New York, Telos Press. Topic. See also. Alterity Authenticity Face-to-face -face, Ethic of reciprocity Ecstasy in philosophy The other Jewish philosophy Martin Buber Knud Eller Logstrup Topic. References Topic. Further reading Topic. External links Institute for Levinasgen Studies. Complete primary and secondary bibliography, a search engine for Levinas's texts, and more. The Levinas Online Bibliography Professor Drive. Joachim Deindem, Editor-in-Chief, Levinas.nl hosted by the University of Humanistics, Utrecht, the Netherlands. Annual Levinas Philosophy Summer Seminar, Director, Richard A. Cohen 1, Asterisk Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Emmanuel Levinas. By Bettina Burgo. Books by a Levinas Scholar. The Emmanuel Levinas Web Page by Peter Adderton. Includes a short biography. New York Times Obituary. North American Levinas Society, Resources, Calls for Papers, Announcements. Levinas and Anarchism. Articles and research tools by Mitchell Cowan Verder Michael R. Michaud, On Escape, a review of Levinas's De Levasion, Other Voices, January 2005. A Century with Levinas, Celebration of Emmanuel Levinas Centennial January 1 – December 31, 2006 Adus, The Epiphany of the Other According to Levinas at the Wayback Machine archived October 28, 2009. Espacethique, Emmanuel Levinas and the Ethic of Responsibility. Institut d'études Levinasiennes. Levinas Studies, an Annual Review. Société Internationale de Recherche Emmanuel Levinas.